everyone, today we're doing a year in review video for all of 2020 where I'm going to be giving all of my thoughts on everything that released throughout the year. So let's begin with January and in January we begin with Epic Clamble. With Epic Clamble, if we look at the teaser, we saw them being a soldier and they look absolutely amazing. The different colour on it and everything and them having more arms is a much like feature by myself. And then over on January 24th, then we got Rare Tring, who is a sort of mastermind with their huge head there and all sorts of crystals on their back. I like the symbol on their arm too and the yellow texture of it. It really works out really well with Tring's original design. Moving forward on January 28th, we got Dawn of Fire 2.1 with expanded cloud slash cave islands. Now on cloud island, they gave us a plentiful amount of room in this update, which was much needed with the amount of prismatics that were being released. So I'm really happy that this came along at that time. However, if we're looking at Cave Island, there's not that much room on the Cave Island when it was expanded, which is a bit unfortunate and we are probably going to be needing an expansion for Cave Island. And also with what released last year, the Space and Party Island ones, we're probably looking at Party Island needing more room in the future too. So it would be cool to get more expansions for those islands, but we'll have to see what releases when we guys. Anyway, on January 29th, then we got following that update a day after my singing monsters 2.3.7 which featured the giga cheap nest island skin and we got a little trailer featuring that being shown for the season of love event and what was wacky about this trailer was it was like a teaser sort of teasing the giga cheap nest island skin but it was in the trailer format so if you guys have ever wondered what teasers could look like if they were done in the trailer like style with all the high tech animations and stuff going on go and check out that giga cheap nest island skin trailer video because that kind of shows what could go on there if they were to do that and they had their assets to do that and stuff and it was a cool experience so go and watch that if you haven't we also got fire oasis dipsters on the 29th as well i'm not a fan of the dipsters i am really hoping that they don't come to the magical islands even though it's sort of an inevitability so while i'm dreading it i'm expecting it as well <laughs> i just don't like the dipsters they aren't my thing i find them quite annoying when i'm trying to listen to the songs and stuff but i know lots of people like the dipsters so let's just move on anyway on january 30th the day after that this really was a dawn of fire week if we're looking at the whole month and then this week it's like everything was compiled into this week for dawn of fire <laughs> with the prismatic tweedles we got all sorts of mutations if you look at the orange one that's on screen on the timeline it looks like a goldfish yet the other ones if you look at them they just are like mutants essentially as we will get into not all prismatics are based around certain things and they all have unique tendencies yes for sure but they aren't all based around a certain thing some of them just take their own stride and are like mutant like versions of the original forms which is also really nice isn't it for that bit of variation but also it is nice to get ones based upon things isn't it like the ones we'll get into later all right then moving on to february in february at the start of the month on the starting week on february 5th we got epic drum player they in their teaser were featured to be howling and the idea behind them was was that they were like a werewolf howling at the moon it was a cool concept guys and this was our final epic 2 which led on to the rare fire elementals being more persistent in the schedule for the game as you will see as we go through each month on february 12th we got prismatic pot belly each one had different glass pots and space like features features on their body and it was cool to see their little stalk underneath too as usually that is kept underneath Potbelly's pot so being able to see that within the animation was specifically cool I found with Prismatic Potbelly. It was nice too in these months I remember when we didn't have to worry about Prismatic Quads as we'll be getting on to later <laughs> and Prismatic Triple Elementals and stuff and now Prismatic Quints we have to worry about so it was nice in these starting months to just have a bit of preparation time for the quads as well. I would say though that back then I had absolutely no idea what I was in for with the prismatics and how hard they would eventually become but I did have a bit of time to get a few across some quints and things I remember at this time anyway that's besides the point so let's move on on February 14th coinciding with the season of love event Rare Boscus released and in their teaser it was all about a manicure and them getting the nails done and stuff I remember and it was based around that so that 
that was pretty cool. And once again, just really unique concepts were invented for the epics throughout the year as we've been over some of them already and also for the rare fire elementals. It really adds to their release, I feel like, and gives them a bit of a unique trait in comparison to the normal counterparts, which is something that just really helps separate them. On February 19th, more prismatics in Dawn of Fire 2.2. Then on February 28th, we got prismatic mammoths. This was a bit of a confusing time because we thought that they meant more prismatics were going to be released. We were kind of expecting the single elemental prismatics to be released first, but the update announced that more were coming and that it would be different when actually it didn't turn out different. So it kind of threw me off. Let's move on to March. Now March is the month where things are got rolling guys because this is when the content started coming. It started dripping out of that tap, like overflowing pretty much at this point. I was expecting things to slow down, but no. The content were flowing from everywhere, guys, as you'll see. Anyway, on March 6th, we got Rare Willoughby, my lovely Rare Fire Elemental. I love Rare Willoughby. I remember as well, this was the day when Rare Willoughby came out that I had all my equipment set up for the first time and I did a reaction video for it. So Rare Willoughby is just so special to me because of me discovering how my equipment works and getting a video up for the first time with my new equipment was just so exciting and a rare willoughby. I love them. I have two on my fire oasis. I'm obsessed with them so much. <laughs> the purple birds are so cute and I like the extra horns too to the side. A lovely rare fire elemental. I love rare willoughby. Obviously I'm a bit biased though because I absolutely adore willoughby. Anyway moving on. On March 11th we got prismatic Noggin. This was a pretty good start to the month for me because I absolutely adore Prismatic Noggin too. So two of my favourite variants release all at once because Prismatic Noggin is my favourite Prismatic. I love all the different fruit combinations that can be found upon each Prismatic Noggin. It's really unique and I adore them so much. I especially like the yellow one. The yellow one is my favourite Prismatic out of everyone that has been released. I do expect that to change though because Prismatic's release so consistently that if it doesn't change, I would be really surprised because I imagine we're going to encounter tons of unique prismatics in the future. Going from the amount that haven't been released yet, it's really exciting the amount of prismatics that are going to be arriving to the game and the amount of concepts that could be featured within them. On March 13th, we got Fire Oasis Natural Rares and then on March 19th, prior to Extravaganza, Magpie arrived on Water Island. And I originally, in my reaction to them, was a little disappointed by the Water Island wordos. However, now I adore them so much. Not as much as Air Island. I am obsessed with Air Island. I love Air Island to bits. But I also really like Water Island. And what they did there was really phenomenal. I don't know what my reaction was about or why I was so disappointed at that time. I think when wordos come along, it can be hard in reactions to condense down what's going on in the song and things because I'm so used to the songs and how they sound so when a huge changing thing comes along like a wordo and changes the entire song it is rather hard to get your mind around the do thing and I think that's why my reactions can be sometimes a bit off for the wordos I'll try and be more open in the future and bear that in mind I've definitely had to think about it so it's just something to keep in mind when you're watching maybe <laughs> but I will definitely be keeping it in mind when I discover them in the future if more wordos do release but let's barge that to the side though <laughs> and move on on to March 25th, where we got the Extravaganza trailer for 2020. My favourite trailer throughout the whole year. In this trailer, we got teasers for Pulsona releasing on Water Island, the Global Lagoon skin releasing, and also a very, very small hint towards what could be happening. It wasn't referenced whatsoever, but obviously this trailer would lead into Bone Island and the amount of surprise and stuff. What happened there? I am literally so excited to get into April, guys. You guys know why already. We've literally just said it. Bon Island. Bon <laughs> We've got one more thing to address before we move on to April. So let's go on to it. Prismatic Turox came out on March 26th. It was like a plush. Now let's move on to April because I'm excited about April. Over on April then. On April 1st, we got Pulsona on Water Island. And I originally thought in my reaction that it 
was an April Fool's joke. And that turned out to be completely false because it was a true release and they were intending to do it and it was, just wasn't something that we were expecting Paul Sona and Tarka individually on Water and Earth Island. We expected a new wordo to replace those. So when that didn't happen, I think it kind of swayed the community and made them think maybe this is an April Fool's joke. But Paul Sona was fully animated and stuff, so it obviously wasn't true. The fact it released on April 1st is definitely something that will be remembered by the community, I think. Having content released on that day just was a really interesting thing to occur. It's something that I don't think may happen in the future, but it's a really interesting experience. I do feel like I'm sounding rather alike to one another works rather well with Paul Cerner and Magpie on Water Island. And I should have also mentioned before for Magpie, Magpie had a huge improvement boost since Cold Island, which was much appreciated. I did not like Magpie whatsoever on Cold Island. So I'm really happy that they turned out really, really cool on Water Island. Can't speak enough goodness out of Water Island and what they did with the song. It was amazing and I just want to shout it out there and scream it out loud because in my reaction I did the complete opposite and now I am telling you my true opinions after considering it and listening to the song tons and tons and tons because I love it so much and the Water Island word does make it tons better and I'm just really grateful for the whole experience. And this is also the time when quarantine started beginning which is something we should point out. It's a year in review so that's obviously something we can't really miss is it? It's something as well that they had to consider on a developing standpoint so I am going to bring it up into the conversation. On April 3rd, we got Rare Epitillo. The teaser involved them rolling over and us having to spot which one was Rare Epitillo, I do believe. Or were they all Rare Epitillo? I can't remember. Editing MPG, that's one for you to sort out. On April 8th, finally, we can talk about it. Yes. We got Bone Island. The huge, huge island that is Bone Island. Now, the song. Let's talk about the song. The song is so amazing on Bone Island. It is my favourite island song out of all the islands found throughout My Singing Monsters. I love how the song builds up throughout the duration of it and it escalates into this grand adventure and I love all the different things they've done on this island. The island itself, it glistens and you can see all the glistening and things and I love how it sparkles and you can tell they really honed into what they were trying to do with the island itself. They knew exactly what they were trying to do and they honed into the idea and got it very precise, almost like Wobbling Island. It had a theme to it, and I feel like all the best islands inside of My Singing Monsters are islands that really hone into a certain theme and just pull it off in such a way that is just perfect, and you can't get it any better, and Burn Island is one of those islands to me. It's an absolutely phenomenal island, and all the Burn Island monsters are really unique. If you look at the individual animations, you can tell so much love and care went into the animations, the fluidity of them. They have so much character and personality. Throughout the entire game, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you have the contrast between Denshu's, for example, and those two compare against one another like nothing else in the whole game. It's like complete polar opposites stood side by side against one another, and it just creates a hugely great monster. I love Denshu's to bits. And the fact we got vocals from this too, as I know sometimes the magical monsters just, just follow an instrumental route. We got Denshu's, we got Pekidna, Pekidna, Pekidna! Pekidna! Pekidna's my favourite monster, guys, out of the whole game now. I love Pekidna to death. The fact that they're on the best island out of the whole game to me is just so meaningful. You have Wither too. Wither is based on the lyrics, and I adore Wither. Their colour design really plays off so well. It reminds me of Wisp in a way, and they're just so whimsical, all of them. I love the cast of Bone Island. I can't speak enough of them. As well with Hollow, I remember on release, they initially had a leaf rather than a berry on top of their head, and that was a really unique thing that you just discovered while you were discovering Burn Island that day, and it just made it all the more special to me, just that little tidbit too, and getting to know the cast of Burn Island was so, so fun. You have the Uduk too, I like how the eyes roll 
all around. And each Burn Island monster has such a unique sound. Again, I'm just going to say it again because I really can't get this point across enough. The Burn Island monsters are just phenomenal. They nailed them down to the car and they really clearly knew what they were aiming for with this island. And so much energy is in this island. So much charm. The developers did a wonderful job with Burn Island. Absolutely amazing. Can't speak enough of it. The fact they managed to separate it too from monsters like Burn Appetit and monsters like that, it just really differentiated the island and made it its own thing that it's like in its own bubble sort of. I love it so much, guys. I want to talk about Burn Island forever, guys, but I do feel like we have to move on. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue talking about it. I'm so sorry, Pekina. I could sit and talk about Pekina all day. You guys know I could. <laughs> Bye, Pekina. On April 9th, we got Prismatic Thumpies. They were based around different variants found in the original Thumpies game. For the diehard fans of My Singing Monsters, I'm sure this meant a lot to them as getting all the Thumpies variants across in a mainstream game is a pretty big deal. And just that reference back to the original Thumpies game, a really cool idea. And the mouth and eyes on top of the pedestal are really cool. And I like what they did with the Prismatic Thumpies designs. Very cool. On April 23rd, two weeks after, as most Prismatics release now in a two week time frame, we then got Prismatic Shrub based around different fishers. This coincided well too with Prismatic Shrub being on Party Island as you have the water theme going on there, which plays really well into Prismatic Shrub and what they were trying to base it around. On April 24th, the day after that, we then got Rare Waddle and what an amazing month this turned out to be. Whilst we do have one point to go over, this is the final thing that released for the games throughout the month. So I just want to address what an amazing month this was. This was my favourite month out of the entire year. And the fact we got this at the start of the year, when usually in past years, content has slid down throughout the starting months of the year. And for this time, when quarantine had started as well, that we just had this huge leap of content when we wouldn't have expected anything really. It was just amazing. The month was wonderful, guys. It truly was. For Rare Waddle then, their teaser was based around polka dot dancing. So on Rare Waddle's design, they have polka dots displayed on top of their body, obviously. So they took that and made them a polka dancer sort of and went off of that in the teaser. Another wacky idea that made a rare fire elemental really cool. At the end of the month two, we had my two part theory series. I wanted to bring this up because I feel like this is a huge landmark moment for the channel and just my content overall. I feel like it's now a series that you don't want to miss if you're a My Singing Monsters fan. I went over tons of lore in it and I feel like it's just really cool. I'm really proud of how it turned out and stuff. If you guys haven't checked it out, I would advise you guys to check it out. I thought it was really cool and I am really proud of it and this was a time too when I were really trying to sort myself out, get together content, see what worked on the channel a little more. I had more time to work specifically on how I was operating the channel, how I was editing things and I could really hone in on my abilities in this time because of quarantine happening and things and I'm really grateful for the time. Obviously it's terrible that we have to go in quarantine and stuff but I was very grateful for the fact that I could improve my editing abilities. I know lots of new fans came along to the channel in this time so it was also very exciting for my channel to see that growth too and to see my work being paid off shall we say in terms of all the editing and stuff I was really trying to get across and all the new equipment I was using. I really like this video series. Anyway, let's move on to May. May was really short in terms of content. We only got three content drops, which is pretty low considering all the other content drops we got throughout the years. So this was likely when they were getting used to doing stuff inside of quarantine and Burn Island was actually made prior to quarantine for the most part last year. So there wasn't much work to be done on Burn Island, even though it is really cool that they managed to get out there in quarantine. I do want to point that out because I feel like it's important to consider when you're thinking about what they developed specifically in this year. All right then, on May 6th anyway, we got Dawn of Fire 2.3 with the Parsi and Space Island hotels. Our first set of hotels, which were very much needed with all the prismatics we were getting, we got the Monster Book 2. Originally, you couldn't see the prismatics inside of the Monster Book in Dawn of Fire, so it was a much needed addition as well for us to get this. And then we also got Prismatic K2. 
cana with all sorts of different plants on top of the head. You have purple and red prismatic cana, for instance, with mushrooms on top of their head. Moving on to May 8th, we got rare rooty toots. And for rare rooty toots, I can't help but look at them and think they look like broccoli. I don't know what it is, but they just look like broccoli to me. In my game, I have rare rooty toot called broccoli guy because rare rooty toot just looks like broccoli and I can't get that out of my head. No matter how much I try, it's just there. <laughs> <laughs> on May 21st, we got Prismatic Dandidu from there, and they really played on anatomy here and being able to see both the brain and tail of Prismatic Dandidu inside of their little dandy florets that are usually there. Moving onwards, on June 3rd, we got My Singing Monsters 2.4.1, the castles update, and we got a trailer for it. The trailer was really fun, and the way that they brought Gajub into the trailer as well was really cool. I really liked it. And and they really played on the different classes and brought in different monsters from different classes, which was really cool to see. And I just really love the trailer overall. And they brought in the crystals as well from Dawn of Fire to get in that law was cool too. The castles update itself was much needed. Lots of fans wanted it. I was so happy that it released. I'm so happy that now I can place all the monsters on my islands if I wanted. So even though I found that strangely enough, I've just kept my islands the same. I did try and redecorate my islands around having all three monster counterparts down on the island, but it just didn't really work that well because there wasn't really enough space on the island. So I just left it as it is. And even though it's not something that I'm necessarily using on my natural islands, it's really paid off on my mirror islands, I must say. And I do know that lots of players are using these castles as I've seen them on tons of islands. So it's just a much needed update that was released and I'm really happy that it came out. On June 4th, we got Prismatic Stog. This was definitely the month for Prismatics for me. I think two of the most unique prismatics came out during this month and they were really trying with the designs you can see. For prismatic stog particularly, they are amazing. The idea of them being a form of slug, shall we say, and slotting into that metallic suit is a really unique idea and the vibrations of the music appearing on the side of them on their metallic suit is a really unique concept as well. I love prismatic stog so much. On June 5th, the day after we got Rare Bob with their pretty flowers on Firehaven. After, on June 17th, we got Firehaven and Fire Oasis Natural Epics. Arguably, they could have been split up with one being in May to sort out that amount of content in May, maybe, but I am not complaining at all because getting them all at once is a really good idea because it just means that we can get them all in a nice swoop. It's not like they're a new monster or anything. So, yeah, but maybe something could have been done in terms of this month to just separate out that content a bit better but I'm not complaining at all I like how June played out with the castles update and the amount of content we got throughout the month anyway moving on on June 19th we got prismatic sponge and all the different creatures inside of prismatic sponge we have the green crocodile like one inside of them and we also have the little cute one inside of the red prismatic sponge I do know that's upside down I love the blue one so much he's really cute how he's just upside down it's funny <laughs> Moving on to July then. We are now halfway through the video, which is very cool. <laughs> Over on July 2nd, we got Rare and Prismatic Glau. This was a joint release between Dawn of Fire and the original game, which was really cool. We've never had a joint release for both games before, so seeing this was a really, really cool moment for both games, I do think. And it really excited me seeing them both in both games. And the teaser, the fact that we've got a Dawn of Fire and My Singing Monsters teaser, just as a I hold My Singing Monsters fan. I've just got to say it. Like, that was one cool moment seeing, like, the My Singing Monsters logo for Cave Island and then it flipping across and seeing Rare Glowl and stuff in that teaser. It was so cool. And Rare Glowl, of course, and Prismatic Glowl have very cool designs. On July 15th, from there, we got the Summer Song trailer and Earth Island Wordos on the same day. The Summer Song trailer featured the Earth Island Wordos and what a treat it is to watch. The animations are always so cool and they play on lots of fun ideas as well in the Summer Song trailers. They're so cool. Getting to watch the monsters dancing and stuff, it really is just a joy. The Earth Island Wordos themselves, I just weren't into them. They're not my thing. I didn't really like them. I know that lots 
of you guys like them though, and even though they aren't that bad, in my reaction to them, I feel like I made them out to be worse than what they are, so I do apologise on that part. I do find though in my weirdo reactions that perhaps I just need to be a bit open about them. I've discovered that this year just from how I'll often be disappointed by them and not really give them a chance just because of how I'm used to the song and how it is. So I just need to be more open to the idea of songs changing and things. I will definitely be concentrating on that idea more in my future discoveries and just keep that in mind because I don't want to bring my reactions down to a downer when actually they're okay. The Earth Island Weirdos aren't that bad. I don't like them but I wouldn't go as far to say that I hate them. I do apologise if my reaction came across like that but you guys as always are just so respectful and appreciative of opinions in the community and accepting so I'm, I'm really happy about that and I'm happy of the community we have built upon the channel. Anyway guys let's move on on to July 16th where we encountered Prismatic Pom Pom with the different flowers that you can find on each Prismatic variant. You have the daisies on top of the purple one and also the roses on top of the golden one particularly too. Even though it's supposed to be the yellow variant we will say it's golden because it literally is golden. <laughs> on July 24th we got Rare Frumble from there and what a joy Rare Frumble is. It really on Bone Island. I was very excited about this because Bone Island is phenomenal. It's song and everything. So getting another monster on there is just a joy. <laughs> and I can't wait for more monsters to come to Bone Island besides this too. Perhaps even like a mythical or something when we start seeing more variants come across onto the magical islands and things as they are expanded upon hopefully. And that will be a very exciting time. Anyway, let's move on to August. On August 7th, we got Rare Snizer, another amazing Rare Fire Elemental can't speak enough of this either. It's a really cool design and I really like what they did. They made it really cartoony and goofy and it really contrasts with Snyder's original design and I just love it to bits. And they had the lore as well of Fire Oasis's son coming down on top of Snyder and transforming it into Rare Snyder, which is a cool concept as well and explains why it's a bit more magma-like Rare Snyder. Anyway, on August 19th, we got the Cloud and Cave Island Hotels and these hotels were very much needed at this point. I remember I was getting a bit worried by here about if we'd have enough space for future prismatics what they might add and these came around just at the perfect time specifically for Cave Island because of the amount of space available on that island as I've mentioned previously in this year in review video and I like how the cave one has a mammoth and I love the Cloud Island one. I'm a bit biased though because I love Cloud Island's design so I'm naturally gonna float towards that one more. Get it float? Cloud Island? Nah? <laughs> okay. Let's move on on August 20th, we got Prismatic Enterbrat who has a wooden like stature and these are just mutants really of the original form. On August 21st, we got Rare Zigurab and they are a sponge cake. And this is quite interesting as well because the community at the time was speculating that we may see Zigurab have a cake like form because it just fits so perfectly because they have the different layers and things and it just makes so much sense. And the fact that they added it as well <laughs> when we were thinking about that is just phenomenal. I didn't think about it myself but the community did and just seeing that come true from the community when they were commenting it is just an amazing feat. I'm really happy with how Rezzy Grab turned out. I really like the strawberry on top and the little cream is really cute. And on each Friday for the last three weeks of August we also got Colossingham teasers. Now the Spirit of Adventure was really cool. I really enjoyed the teasers we got in this time. I really 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 hope that they do a teaser series like this again. It was a joy to follow it along and that hype train, even though I don't like where it led, I think that hype that was there was just such a cool experience and I really want to get something like that again. Hopefully for something really cool. I love the little boat they travelled along and the summer song tie-in that we got there with Hula seeing them off and everything. It was cool. And it gave us something to look towards every week too besides content that is coming towards the game and it gave us a bit of anticipation in terms of the next update for the game and I just really liked it. I should also mention that on August 17th we received the trailer for My Singing Monsters Fandomonium, the new cartoon series that we will be seeing early next year which is exciting too and the style they're going for with the series going from the teaser trailer that we got looks really cool so I'm really excited for that whilst we don't have a lot of information around it as of right now, 
but it is something that is going to be rather big for the franchise i do imagine next year so it's definitely something to bring up anyway on to september then on september 2nd we got the collar singham trailer and then the day after on september 3rd we got the collar singham itself i have mentioned in my review my opinions regarding the collar singham and i don't really want to go on about it too much here so we're just gonna leave that topic alone <laughs> if you guys want to check out my opinions though do go and check out my review video on it on september 4th we got prismatic z grab now i know i mentioned that june was the month for prismatics but if you're looking in terms of quantity this was definitely the month for prismatics we got seven unique prismatic monsters and <laughs> i've gotta say they're all really cool and the fact they released them so fast after one another is astounding i don't understand how i managed to get them all either <laughs> we managed to do it somehow guys which is very very good otherwise we would have been in a bit of mishap wouldn't we in terms of videos and stuff in that month but we managed to pull through which of course is really good with prismatic ziggurab they are based on fleas and all i have to say about that is the strive towards prismatic each being unique is continued <laughs> on september 11th we got prismatic flower based on different candies and with prismatic flower and also prismatic krillbe who came out on september 18th they were teased originally on the loading screen for the previous dawn of fire update so seeing these come into the game was exciting because we didn't know what they'd look like particularly and the fact that they were teased and stuff just gave us a bit more anticipation towards these monsters releasing so seeing what they look like was good and i'm really happy with how these monsters look my favorite out of these four though has to be the one that released on september 25th with that being prismatic flugel as they take the form of many robots and they are really unique i love the prismatic flugels the little screws and things you find on them and the different instruments they have for the trumpets it's a really unique prismatic species and i am overjoyed with what they did with those it was a really cool prismatic and even though the prismatics came out one after one another they each maintained their own style and as we're going to get on to now on september 30th three prismatics did also release on september 30th with those being prismatic repetilla drumpler and cybot these were mutant like they didn't particularly have a theme going for them they were just all like mutants a bit like prismatic enterbat and prismatic tweedle anyway on september 30th besides the three prismatics we got light island a phenomenal island the island itself looks phenomenal i love it to death and the obstacles and everything and the monsters the monsters flores oh i love flores the way that they glow and things and as seeing them in the trailer was amazing i would have never expected it as well when the trailer released that day for light island that we would be seeing a magical island when Sousa came along i was ecstatic it was a time to be playing my singing monsters for sure there were tons of content coming out at this time particularly in this month Month. even though we didn't see a lot of consistent content throughout the month there were some major major releases in september for the game that changed the game hugely and seeing those come out in anniversary month too was amazing and all the promotions of course kept us afloat during the month and led to a really awesome month i must say i really love the light elements on october 7th the following month we got tiawa and gob 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 i love gob gob is so so cool they make an organ noise when they open the mouth and it's just so unexpected and i adore them to bits they are my favorite light monster and the fact that they released at first two makes them all the more special i love gob so much and i'm really excited for when they return potentially in the future and tiawa too did not had a fire elemental in over a year so it was very exciting to finally get another fire elemental inside of dawn of fire and to make it even more special too it was also the one that was featured all the way back when in the behind the scenes video in the cloud island soundtrack that we heard and we speculated upon back in the good old days on the channel and it was exciting to finally get this monster which we knew was on the way but didn't know when we would be getting it and seeing another fire elemental monster after so long was just so joyful i am very appreciative of the fact that dawn of fire gets consistent updates now and it's seen alongside the original game now is getting very 
regular content drops and I'm just very appreciative of that fact but a scene of Fire Elemental is just really cool. If I had to look at it I would definitely prioritize Prismatics as it's given Dawn of Fire more content throughout the year rather than a Fire Elemental coming out in every three months or something. So yeah while I do prefer what's happening now it was cool to see Tiawa come along. Tiawa and Go both releasing on the same day was a spectacular experience and it was something that I really hope we see in the future with content that releases for both games. Akin to the Prismatic Glowl and Rare Glowl release, this was a very cool experience. It tops Prismatic and Rare Glowl though, absolutely, because these are unique monsters and it doesn't get better in my singing monsters other than discovering new monsters because that's just the main thing that I really love out of the games, specifically out of content that releases. On October 14th, the following week, because we got a light monster every week from that point since Light Island's release, we got Spy Trap and Spootical. Mainly with Spootical, we got Gajub's Beatles costume that was inspired off of the Beatles for Halloween, which was exciting, and we got the Dipster costumes, which were new. And Spy Trap itself added percussion to the song, which was exciting, and the way the eyes glow in the song and stuff, it's really cool. I really like them, and I wouldn't have expected their design to turn out how it did. Going back to the teaser that we got for them, I thought it would turn out like Bulbo did, whereby it would be a light bulb that bit but to see me be wrong was an amazing time because it came out of nowhere and surprised me. On October 21st the week after we got Pluckbill and for Pluckbill every time I look at them I can't help but feel like they shouldn't have a mouth. If we look back at the concept art for them I feel like the mouth just shouldn't be there. It looks cuter when the mouth isn't there. I don't know why the design choice was made for the mouth. I am on the hashtag no mouth squad for Pluckbill. On October 21st third following Pluckbill on the same week the hype around Light Island did not subside because we got Rare Sousa for Light Island adding even more content to Light Island while all the light monsters were releasing I loved how this came out straight away immediately after Light Island's release we've never really seen a variant do that before so the fact that we got Rare Sousa so soon was cool and to see them coincide with the Light Island monsters that were releasing was a really good idea I do feel like because it just built upon the hype that was going around around Light Island and gave us even more of something to be hyped about with Light Island. On October 28th, we got Tutu, a lovely ballerina-like monster that I really adore. Their design is so, so cute. And the little tappity tap lights that come from when they dance around and how they dance around and prance around the grid. It's really cute. The following month, on November 4th, we then got Bulbo, and they make a rather unique sound. Originally, when I was discovering them I remember looking at their design and not thinking that they would specifically make sound from their arms and that they would make it from the bulb yeah seeing them make it from the arms was fascinating and another surprise also another light monster released then on November 11th with that being Fiddlements my second favorite light monster the fact that they were a UFO and they float around and their sound oh it's holy it's wonderful I remember just discovering them and being fascinated by the sound. It really is just so cool and the potential it has on future islands too when Fiddlement goes to other islands maybe is going to be absolutely groundbreaking I do feel like. On November 18th we saw the conclusion of the Light Elementals. It was disappointing to see the content drop from here. I really liked how the weekly drops happened and the fact that we got a new monster every week to look towards. I think all at once releases like with Bone Island yet weekly releases like with Light Island are both good in their own merits and I love them both equally but I think we should get both of these types of releases equally if that makes sense so we should have not just weekly releases but also all at once releases I feel like that equals it out so that fans are getting both sides of the spectrum too because they imagine people have varying opinions on whether things should be weekly or should release all at once I think just like we saw with this year particularly even in and out both of those and making it so that both happen throughout the year is the best idea. For me personally this year I must say I thoroughly enjoyed the weekly releases and would really like to see them return. I do think that is in part though due to the fact that we haven't seen something like this ever really before so it was really interesting to see this happen. Whilst we're talking about the Light Monsters 2 and we're concluding as thoughts about it I do want to bring up the song behind Light Island 2. If you want to go and find out about my 
thoughts on the Light Island song, please go and watch my bloat reaction video as I did discuss all of my thoughts over there. On November 25th, the week following bloat, we got to Rare Kana, who was on six islands, a whopping six, a huge amount in comparison to the Rare Fire Elementals themselves as they're only really on one to three islands. So getting Rare Kana on six islands was amazing and they did so well with Rare Kana's design. The hieroglyphs on them and the fire element being on the belly is cool. I love Rare Kana so much. On December 2nd, we got My Singing Monsters 3.0.3 there with Avatars and the Jukebox. The jukebox featured songs all the way throughout the My Singing Monsters franchise and it reached out to games like Furcon's Jelly Dreams and even went as far to include the Dawn of Fire trailer song. I really love the fact that they released those tracks. I mean, getting to listen to the Air Island Furcon's Jelly Dreams song was really cool too. I'm just grateful that we got to see those at all and I would have never expected anything like that to come out of it and obviously at Avatars too, not seeing people with blank icons <laughs> will certainly be something to look towards whilst playing the game. On December 4th, we got the versus mode for the color singing, which I'm not going to talk about because I talked about it in my review video. Then on December 9th, we got Ye costumes and Yule on the color singing. We didn't get any new Ye costumes really for the most part. We got Stuart in a new years like costume, which was a treat and I really like how they are dressed up. The week after that, however, we then got Dawn of Fire 2.6 featuring Prismatic Candelavera's release and other Prismatics coming upon the way. Each Prismatic Candelavera has a unique shell featured as their face and I really like what they've done with the first Quint Elemental. I'm excited to see what the other Prismatics look like from here. I've not had a chance to really look in depth at the Prismatic Candelavera's yet as I've not unlocked them all as of recording this. I've only unlocked two so far so we'll see how that adventure comes along I guess over the next week as I work was getting those. Oh wait, the Dawn of Fire one should say December 14th. Apologies, guys. Let's just move on anyway, though. On December 16th, My Singing Monsters Live ended. Now, this is where the year really did come into its own conclusion. It truly is an end of an era here right now with My Singing Monsters. The type of content we've been over throughout the year, I feel like we're going to see something completely different. I mean, not in terms of prismatics, obviously, and Dawn of Fire, but for the original game, I feel like things are definitely going to change next year and it's going to be exciting to see what they do but also it's going to be a little scary because we don't know whatsoever what this studio is planning and see My Singing Monsters live and as well alongside My Singing Monsters content potentially changing is just truly an end of an era for My Singing Monsters. The future of the game is uncertain at this point. While I do think My Singing Monsters live ended rightfully so with it having a two year long run a really long run I would have loved to have seen it gone on longer and I'm just really curious now what the future of My Singing Monsters is. And guys, that just about wraps up our year in review video. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching. Make sure to like this if you did and make sure to subscribe down below too and to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any more of my videos. Anyway though guys, I'll see you later. Bye!